it education, we had to review the curriculum and put strategies that would improve on what the children learn. The government of Uganda has in its regulations, for instance, the government white paper on education, the NDP plans, and the Parliament Education Committee report have continuously echoed the issue of the need to review the curriculum and roll out. The current curriculum, Madam Speaker and dear colleagues, was designed in the 1960s to address mainly producing the human resource for white collar jobs. The government currently has a different development agenda to address the country's transformation. Right, Honorable Speaker, we note that lower secondary level is still basic education. Learners are exposed to a variety of subjects to widen their scope of thinking and enable their intellectual ability to grow. The cognitive growth is enhanced through exposure, among other things. At this level, we are not yet going into career paths, but exposed to what one can pick interest in or is about to do. The curriculum is competence-based, aimed at exposing the learners to issues of creativity and innovativeness and, and emphasize values which have been a challenge. Madam Speaker, the teaching has been developing only the cognitive domain. It has been just about grades. And all of you, dear colleagues, you agree with me that most of our schools have been teaching for the purpose of getting grades. How many grades they get in order to get more customers, if I can term it that way. Without developing the entire child with development of affective and psychomotor domains. The concept of the O-level curriculum has not changed much. The concepts are the same. The major changes in this curriculum, Madam Speaker and dear colleagues, are the following. One of them is the methodology. The way the teaching is going to be done. The reform is in the teaching strategies on how the teachers will teach the different subjects. The teachers, are, their major role in this will basically be to facilitate learning. The second one, Madam Speaker and dear colleagues, is the emphasis on values. The learner is expected to acquire positive values through the teaching strategies that have been provided in the new curriculum. For example, cooperation, respect for others, being a team player, resilience, among others. And this comes as a result of what the child is being exposed to in the new teaching and learning process. It is testing. Week one testing, week two testing, end of month testing. All through the term is just testing. And our major concern as educationists is how do you weigh a cow all the time without feeding it? So, dear colleagues, the emphasis of formative assessment in the new curriculum is also the shift from thinking that teaching is about assessment. The teachers will, through observation, conversation, and the product will form the basis of this kind of assessment. The next issue, Madam Speaker, the reduction on instruction time from 8 a.m. to 2.55 p.m. will create time for self-reflection by learners. But this will be guided and supervised by the teachers. But also the plan is to have learners to be innovative and creative during this time, to consolidate on the learning that would have taken place earlier. The other issue, Madam Speaker, some, yes, some subjects that have been emphasized, for example, Kiswahili, have been introduced at primary level, and it should continue at second race since it is even the second language official language. It is our second official language. So there is no way we can neglect it. And furthermore, Madam Speaker, because of the East African integration, emphasis of teaching of Kiswahili is inevitable. 
Madam Speaker, another important issue that I would like the House to appreciate. There has been a lot of outcry on the overloaded curriculum with a menu of 43 subjects. They have now been reduced to 21, of which 11 subjects are compulsory. And these are mathematics, English, physics, chemistry, biology, Kiswahili, physical education, history and political education, geography, history, geography and entrepreneurship. Of the subjects on the menu currently have too much content that in some that in some like chemistry teachers were not co completing the syllabus some of the content in subjects like physics madam speaker syllabus some of the content in subjects like physics was obsolete in the areas of electronics geography has had topics like rain, rain, uh, Rhineland, Tennis Valley, these and many others had to be removed to keep relevant with the expectations of our society and the world today. The competence-based curriculum Is it therefore in order for the member of the cabinet to be engaging in private conversation, especially my very good friend, the Minister of Internal Affairs, the new Minister for Environment and Local Government, who should actually help the colleagues in the... No? What we are discussing was relevant, but we apologize that we are doing it here. But what we are asking is, at what time do children wake up to go to school? That is all we are just exchanging views for. <laughs> but we apologize for the intervention. Thank you. Okay. On certificates. They will live with an O-level certificate and that of the world of work and a directorate of industrial training. And to add, allow me, Madam Speaker, to even add that colleagues will agree that what has been, how the, the curriculum has been, it has been creating one avenue for children to move on. If you don't go to the university, then it means you are a failure. So that has been the avenue. But now we are creating two avenues. If a child does not take that avenue, at least can take the avenue of the technical institutions. And this is basically to be innovative and, cre and create their own jobs. And it is good for the country. Madam Speaker, these and many others have been a concern by the legislators, by my colleagues, and Ugandans have re-echoed their call to review the curriculum, to have a different Uganda, beginning with basic education and all through to the university. The preparation for the kind of human resource the country wants begins with basic education, which needs to change to provide enough basis for learners to take on tertiary and university education with enough grounding. What is happening now is lacking, and surely it needs to change. The change must be now. What has been done to date, Madam Speaker? I'm sure members would want to know. What have we done to show readiness? Madam Speaker, the lower secondary is still basic. Therefore, the curriculum aids are giving the most critical content that is felt necessary, which the learner should acquire before leaving uh, this level of education. In order the, uh, to do this, we have been able to do retooling. We have retooled master trainers who are also now helping us in training the teachers, especially the, the senior one teachers who are supposed to implement this curriculum. And this training is being done at Sesemat centers. Madam Speaker, I want to allay the fears of parliament 
that training is a continuous process. It cannot be a one-off or a one-day thing. It is a continuous process. Whether we started it yesterday, we should continuously do the retooling. And that is what makes a, a perfect teacher. So I want to make my colleagues be, co be reassured that we have no problem. We are going to do this. And remember, colleagues, you will never do anything until you do it. So this is the time that we must implement this curriculum for the good of this country. It's not about politics, friends. It's about the good of your children, our children, and our grandchildren. A lot of consultations have also been done, dear colleagues. We have consulted all the necessary stakeholders. We have consulted the head the, all the head teachers associations, the head teachers. We have consulted the religious who are in charge of education. We have consulted parliament as well through, your com through our committee of education, which represents parliament. On several occasions, we have held workshops. We have done things. And Madam Speaker, I have evidence that members of parliament have thoroughly been consulted and engaged we have interacted with them on several occasions in hotels, even in, the, in Parliament here, even at MCDC. That has been ably done. And to make matters worse, Madam Speaker, this has been on table or in, has been on for the last 12 years. So even if anyone wanted to probably ask more questions, there has been quite enough time for us to be able to put questions in place. But Madam Speaker, all in all, we shall continue providing responses and information. Madam Speaker, Cabinet discussed the curriculum review several times and approved it. And so that is why we are implementing it. The materials have also been developed, including the senior one textbooks, which, is be, which are being used to kickstart the implementation of the lower secondary curriculum. Madam Speaker, I brought copies. I brought copies of all the books that we have developed that are going to help us in the implementation of this curriculum. And Madam Speaker, at the end of my presentation, I'm going to lay them on the table. Madam Speaker, the distribution of these books is ongoing in preparation for the senior one who are reporting on the 17th, but some schools have already received them. The process for procurement of textbooks from publishers is ongoing, and the books for senior one and two are expected to be supplied in July. The senior one group that will be instructed in the new curriculum are expected to sit for their first national examinations in 2023. Now, Madam Speaker, there are quite a number of issues that I think members and probably the public have been concerned about. And one of them is why Chiswahili compulsory are not agriculture. Madam Speaker, the East African community calls for East African integration and use of Kiswahili is pertinent. And we are all aware that we have recognized Kiswahili, like I've already said, as our official language. But Agriculture is one of the subjects that we have provided, and it is, in, it is taught under integrated science, which gives the learners all exposure to offer it when they get to senior one, if they so wish. Besides, learning takes place throughout one's life. Agriculture is one thing that takes place throughout one's life. So informally, our learners get agriculture skills from home, from community, and as they interact in their society, but also in the teaching of the general science, our children are being taught agriculture. They still have the option of offering it as an elective when they get to school. So also the science subjects incorporate concepts of learning agriculture. Madam Speaker, the second issue, the second issue has been private schools. Members of have, I mean, private schools have been left out. Madam Speaker, I would like to confirm that private school teachers have been included in the curriculum review process. And even in the retooling, they have been considered. We have been retooling both government and private teachers. Some of their staff participated in the writing of the curriculum, and some of them have been trained as master trainers 
and they are now participating in the training of the 20,000 teachers nationwide. So government has issued all syllabus books to private schools free of charge. Members, I want to assure you, all our secondary private sco schools, including government, are all going to get these books. As long as the school is registered with government. Because if it is private and it's not registered, how shall we know we have this kind of school? And we are giving them these books free of charge. Now, Madam Speaker, the Ministry has designed the textbooks and developed the Senior One textbook to be used this year to kickstart the teaching of the new curriculum. The provision of books will continue, like I've said, we shall not stop. But now, Madam Speaker, on the issue of the budget, it is another issue that members have been concerned about. It requires a budget of 143 billion for the next five years. Remember, for the next five years. For this time round, our budget is about 47 billion. Now, the government has provided us, as we speak, 10.3 billion to kickstart the process as more funds are going to be identified. I want to assure you members that government is committed to this and it will provide the resources. Minister of Finance will definitely provide the resources. So Madam Speaker, our prayer. Honorable Speaker and dear colleagues, to kindly request your office Madam Speaker, to organize a one-day workshop where the Minister of Education and Sports can be able to sensitize members on the new lower secondary curriculum to enable them respond to their constituents with authority. In case you want to get more information, we have consulted them, Madam Speaker, but in case they want to be more informed or to if they want any questions to ask because they need to be an authority when they are talking on radio or when they are informing their members. Because, Madam Speaker, it is so shameful for a member of parliament to be asked and you cannot be in position to respond or to respond correctly. Now, I would also like to request for support of the House. We are requesting you members of parliament to support us in this. Because improving the quality of education in Uganda is not a sole responsibility of the Minister of Education. It is our shared role. So I'm calling upon your support. <laughs> Madam Speaker, as I conclude, as government, we are not halting the implementation of the lower secondary curriculum. I wish to emphasize it is starting now with Senior 1, February 2020. Madam Speaker, at this moment, allow me to lay on table all the books. I have the support manuals and teacher's guides and also the subject textbooks. At this, just a sample for members to be assured that the books are in place. Allow me to lay on table, Madam Speaker. One by one. Madam Speaker, allow me to lay on table the English language and literature in English senior one textbook, lower curriculum, lower secondary curriculum. The geography textbook, entrepreneurship learners book, senior one, entrepreneurship teacher's guide, senior one. CRE Learner's Book, Senior 1, Mathematics Teacher's Guide, Senior 1, Physics Teacher's Guide, Senior 1, Teacher Support Manual, Biology se uh, Sessions and, work <coughs> and Worksheets, The Senior 1 Physics Prototype, NCDC, Biology Prototype, Teacher's Guide, Senior 1, Lower Secondary Curriculum by NCDC, they are by the NCDC. But okay. honorable speaker in the academic writing, the publisher, the author, the publisher, and the publication. 
would it be procedurally right that the minister includes in her mentioning, other than the title of the book, the, the author of the book, the, the publisher, and the publication of the book? Thank you. These books have been published by the National Curriculum Development Center. Curriculum Development Center of Uganda. Madam Speaker, 2019. Madam Speaker, with the due respect to the minister, Madam Speaker, with the due respect to the minister, we all went to school. There is no person who studied geography, who can publish chemistry, physics, one person for all the books. We are requesting, since the minister has requested us to support the program and also go and tell the rest. We just requested the minister to tell us the authors of those books, all the books that have been laid on the table mat. Only that. Who are the authors? Madam Speaker, the general science textbook, senior one, has been published by the NCDC 2019. Clarification. Clarification. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. The publisher is. Minister. Madam Speaker. Who developed it? Madam Speaker. Who developed them? Madam Speaker. Is the NCDC. Allow the to, to lay you lay. Madam Speaker, dear colleagues, National Curriculum Development Center is not a person. It's not one person, colleagues. <laughs> Honour members, allow the minister to play. Madam Speaker. I, I Madam Speaker. I, allow the minister to play. Yeah, books. Okay. Madam Speaker, the National Curriculum Development Center is composed of the various disciplines. Yes, <laughs> it is composed by a number of disciplines. The next one is the History and Political Education Teacher's Guide to prototype book for senior one by the National Curriculum Development Center. History and political education prototype, and this is now the, the learner's textbook by NCDC. 2019. <laughs> Physical education prototype, senior one, by NCDC, 2019. Physical Education Teacher's Guide to the Learner's Prototype, NCDC, Senior 1, 2019. Chemistry Teacher's Guide, Senior 1, Lower Secondary Curriculum, by the NCDC, 2019. I beg to lay. Procedure, Madam Speaker. Chemistry Textbook, Senior 1, Lower Secondary Curriculum, Procedure, by the Speaker. NCDC, 2019. Procedure, Madam, Madam Speaker, thank you very much. I beg to lay. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honor Minister. Wait. Honor Minister, thank you. Thank you very much for the information. Parliament should allow ministers to do their work for the common good. You're, I don't think this is not fair to Parliament. First of all, you should have come last year. We are in this because. We, we ordered you to bring them. Otherwise, you are moving on your own. We are out in the countryside, they are asking us. So, we are, we are stakeholders. Parliament is stakeholder. We are not interfering. We are stakeholders. Madam Speaker, that's why I have not read it. So, I beg that it is removed from the statement. And that's why I did not present it on record. I beg your indulgence, Madam Speaker and the House. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I know you are going to allow us to debate this matter. Sure. 
the procedure issue I am raising, this statement contains inaccuracies. Are they going to be addressed by the debate? And the minister tells the lies outrightly. I went to Chivuli, where my son is a student. The teachers who are going to undertake this new curriculum are actually fidgeting, going through training. That's why you have postponed the term for these schools. They are confused. There was in schools in Kampala. Some schools visiting others to find out how this will work, but where they are visiting, they are telling them even us don't know. So this particular statement of the Minister, Madam Speaker, is full of inaccuracies, full of lies. I don't know whether we need to debate it or ask her to go and bring a statement. Moreover, as Madam Speaker, you have uh, rightly pointed out, there are even elements of the statement she has not read because herself is embarrassed by her own statement. That's why she's, she's skipping them. But the truth of the matter, you've caused, you've caused a stampede in secondary schools. If you don't know, maybe you don't live in Uganda. Yes. Uh, so I, I was seeking, I mean, raising a procedure issue. Do we begin debating, Madam Speaker, the the statement with its inaccuracies, with the outright rise of the minister. That's what she has presented. Let's debate it as it is. You point out the inaccuracies. Um, I, want out thank the inaccuracies. You. I want to thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. Are you? No. Madam Speaker, I'm the one who raises the question. I think I should. I'm uh, the one but who... it was yes. Let's start with the Honorable Maranga, Maranga first. The members that we support it, but it has reports, the right honorable, I mean, Honorable Minister. <coughs> One, Honorable Minister, it is a competence based curriculum. You are creating an island. You are, start, you are starting it from senior one. When in the actual sense, you should have started from P1. Competence assessment curriculum. Why are you creating an island? Why are you starting from second or senior one, not starting from P1? That is one. Number two, the grading system. Your NEP is going to set exams out of 80%. 80, your NEP. 20% is going to be assessed by teachers. One minister, schools all over the country have various competences. A student in Bukomero Secondary School is not the same student in Budo King's College. You don't have enough money for inspectors to go and inspect what is taking place in the schools. Do you have enough money to give to your name, to go and assess and ensure that the 20% that will be produced by the teachers in the various schools will be the right marks. Third, the right honor speaker, as members have alluded, the minister has created a stampede. In some schools, senior ones have started. No textbooks, no, because the whole curriculum is based on human resource. The teachers who are going to impact the knowledge that is going to have an effect on a, on a kid for the rest of his or her life, who has not been told. Something you have spent more than 12, 13 years preparing, how can you impart it in somebody for three days and you expect that teacher to teach somebody for the rest of their life? Honorable Minister, schools, students change schools. This is competence assessment curriculum. I was in Kido, a student is in Kigez High School. After senior three, he leaves. And, okay, senior two, he goes to Makere College. 
He carries his marks from Kigeza High School to, to Makere College School of the 20%. Makere College will say that I cannot carry the marks for Kings, I mean for Kigeza High School, I cannot believe in the competence of teachers in Kigeza High School. What will that student do? Right on speaker, this kind of curriculum is not starting from Uganda. Other countries have tried it and have faced challenges. Have you looked at those challenges? It, they, it is being, Kenya has started it, but Kenya, it started it last year. It started with primary school. Why have you started with secondary school? They tried it in, in the first years in Lesotho, it failed. They tried it in Swaziland, the first three years, it failed. In Ghana, it almost failed. But government was able to increase, I mean, give more money to the ministry. Now, this 20% assessment, you expect teachers to be on the students all the time. Our teachers, because of their pay, one teacher is teaching in more than 10 schools. When will that teacher get enough time to assess the students in 10 schools? Have you looked at the financial implication in as far as this new curriculum is concerned? I am glad you have said, you have said that you are not going to hold this exercise. We have a saying in our, in, our, in our culture that you jump from a frying pan to fire itself. I would like to inform you, Honorable Minister, if you are not careful, you are jumping from a frying pan to fire itself. Information. Thank you. Uh, giving me way. Uh, right now, speaker, that this one is an emergency for them to be in such a hurry. You can handle all your plans, but the issue of assessment of exams, everywhere there must be motivation at the end of each term. Now, if you say that you are eradicating or you are moving it, those assessments. How do our children perform? Right on our speaker, the information I want to give Honorable Mawanda. On the floor of Parliament here, you directed me of education to bring here a policy on eating in schools, feeding, feeding policy in schools. <laughs> yes. Right on our speaker, you order the Ministry of Education to bring here on the floor a policy on feeding in schools. Up to now, they are hiding, they haven't brought that policy here. And our children are, are not performing very well because of not feeding in schools. Some districts are getting zero in first grade. I've just read Abim. Abim just got zero. Those are the issues you should be handling now. We have issues of lack of inspection in schools. Children are not performing. The teachers are not there on, the, on their duty because of lack of inspection. You have been crying that you don't have money for inspection. Now you are bringing this issue that you want money. And out of 150 billion, you have just got 10 billion. Is that information? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, right on the speaker. <laughs> what? Okay, one minute. As I conclude, right on the speaker. The Honourable Minister said he has brought all the stakeholders on board. I would like her, uh, like her to clarify more which stakeholders the private schools are crying out, parents are crying out, members of parliament here are crying out, whom have you brought on board? Why are you hiring to implement something where you have taken 13 years? Why didn't you give yourself a year? piloting and seeing how possible this curriculum can be implemented. Uh, let's hear the shadow. Were they the ones in Kampara? Or the ones in Kitugum? And Wundiwujo, the private schools? In Wundiwujo, are they consulted? I want to know that. Let's hear, Honorable. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. When you are fixing a short-term problem, 
you make an adjustment. If you are doing for posterity, you reform. I think the minister has just communicated an, a small adjustment in the curriculum. We can't call this a reform in education. If you did consider a reform, you are misled. This can't pass for a curriculum reform. Madam Speaker, one of the, the key deliverables of our education policy is access. Uh, on top of uh, numeracy, literacy, and the general skill development for the younger people. Uh, just before this statement and the policy attendant to it, the Minister of Education communicated uh, a few months back, in December to be specific, that uh, there's a policy adjustment. There's no more funding of USE in private secondary schools. And before this, the dust settles, this is thrown in our faces. This is what they call chaotic planning, Madam Speaker. There's no better way of describing what we are facing than calling it uh, chaos. This is chaos. First of all, you are proposing, you actually have implemented a change that access has been limited. Access through USA has been limited to strictly government secondary schools. The initial policy was that for every sub-county, there will be a secondary school. These schools are not there. They're not there. And before you put them there, you're making a very serious reform to the effect that you can only fund children through strictly government schools. And then expand on the works. But I'm speaker, I do not know whether the Minister of Education is in a panic and would not have information, and they are not honest to seek help from those who know what to do. But I'm speaker, you, you cannot talk about a change in the assessment without taking time to develop assessment tools and take through the trainers strictly how you're going to assess. Honourable Minister, this is called the organized chaos. <laughs> you can't. Assessment as a key component in education is a whole different aspect and it needs time. Madam Speaker, the supervisors of our education are the teachers. They're the teachers of this, these schools, private and the government, are completely green about this. The ministry is trying, is huffing and puffing to train some teachers to some smart schools, but their supervisors are green. So what are the teachers to go and do? To look on in awe, in admiration, in fear? As their juniors come to cause further organized chaos in the school they're supposed to pretend over and report. Honorable Minister, with due respect, I don't think you are ready. Unless you're not discussing education. If you're discussing education, we need to roll back this policy. Because it's very clear. Madam Speaker, I made a quick quip into this book called A Prototype. And a prototype, where you do have necessarily an acknowledgement, you have a disclaimer. And the disclaimer so reads. <laughs> this material has been developed strictly for training purposes. Content and images have been adapted from several sources which we might not fully acknowledge. This document is therefore illustrated from being reproduced for any commercial purposes. The disclaimer not necessarily commercial, but even content is disclaimed. So, somebody simply picked pictures here and there, pieced them together, and say, here we are, go and train. So, if the trainees in system at school do ask, what these pictures mean. Somebody will say, can you read the disclaimer? 
Madam Speaker, we can do better. We can do better than this. And uh, I would like to invite the Royal Minister. She's a seasoned educator, and I'm sure I'm communicating. She's that seasoned, and she really knows what to do. And she has very, very, you know, I know her, we know each other, we are good friends. She knows this is not education. This is something different. Remember, she was the chair of the Quality Education Committee of this house. Absolutely. Quality Education. Absolutely. Let me take a question for my colleague. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Right Honourable Speaker, the information I would like to give to this house, the training the minister is talking about, the ministry invited only five teachers per school. Not more than five teachers per school. Right, honorable speaker, currently, currently, according to the new curriculum, we have 14 basic subjects. I am wondering how those four teachers that are being trained shall handle all the subjects being put in the curriculum. Right, honorable speaker, we need to be very serious. I am happy that the minister said, learning is the process. The assumption, the ministry is assuming that if a pupil starts P1 in a particular school, that child will finish P Senior 4 in that particular school. That assumption is very wrong. What will happen to those ones who will be expelled from that school? What will happen to those ones who will transfer from one school to another school? So we need to be serious, right, Honourable Speaker. Uh, right, right, Honourable Speaker. Yeah, yeah, just a minute. 